If we're lucky, every so often we'll go to a concert that will have a huge impact on us. In this video, I'd like to tell you about a concert that I went to uh, just a few miles from here, over 38 years ago. And it literally changed the course of my studies and my life. It's a little bit self-indulgent, uh, made it for myself really. But if you like it, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. And in the comments, maybe you could tell me about any concerts that have had a similar effect on you. I've not been back to the venue since that night in 1985. It's not the kind of place you drive past, a small remote town in Wales. It was recorded by the BBC for the radio show Music for Guitar. the end of this week's Music for Guitar, yeah. which was taken from a recital yeah, arranged in association with the Mid-Border Community Arts Association, and which we recorded at St Andrew's Church in Prestine in Paris last October. I've made the journey today to have a look at the place, remember that night and meet one of the organisers, himself a fine guitarist and winner of the Julian Bream Prize, Gareth Rees Roberts. This is a relatively remote um, area and village. How was Manuel Barreco persuaded to come here? Well, it was not so much persuaded as hijacked by Gareth Walters, the BBC producer, who picked him up at Heathrow Airport. He had just, Manuel had just finished a, a big European tour. And I think he'd been in Germany or Holland and flew in. And he was going to do a recording for the BBC. So Gareth picked him up and he thought he was being taken into a BBC studio in London to do the recording. And off they went, down the M4. And after about three quarters of an hour, Manuel realised London hadn't appeared yet. <laughs> <laughs> he said, um, where are we going? And, uh, oh, oh it, 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 it's, it's all organised. We've got a lovely church. Um, you know, we recorded David Russell and Wolfgang Lendl there. And, you know, it, it's really, really good venue. You, you'll really like it. But it, it is in Wales. <laughs> where, where is Wales? You know, well, it's a bit further. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a good sort of three-hour drive, I suppose. Mm. Um, and, yeah, Gareth had his wife and daughter with him as well, so they had a good car full. Okay. So they, they yes, they, they, they ended up here, and he was slightly put out to find he was actually doing a full recital. Was he? It was by stealth then, almost. Well, I don't know, but it did seem quite strange at the time because he was slightly put out and he came here and it was a bit like no it wasn't that warm mm. and um, I remember there were there were heaters all around him he insisted he had some sort of warmth so we had convector heaters <laughs> around him which he could sort of get his hands yeah, yeah. sort of near yeah um, he wasn't too happy about it <laughs> but, uh, so that's how he ended up here okay just tell us about the concept of um, music for guitar and Gareth Walters because we don't have it anymore. No. Um, and he had a belief in it and he enjoyed going and recording the, the best guitarists he could find. When he used to go to some of the guitar festivals, I think he and Colin Cooper used to often meet up at those. Mm. Um, Co Colin didn't miss the opportunity for coming to this recital because it was the only recital Manuel gave in Britain that year. Well, I think it was actually a longer period than... It was year. a longer period than that. Well, he hadn't yeah. been over for a long time. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we had people coming here from Scotland, Cornwall. Right. One group came from Holland because they'd missed him in Europe. Mm. Um, oh, so, really? You oh, had... yes. I mean, we had about 350, 400 people in here. I mean, it was packed. It was packed, Absolutely I remember. Absolutely packed, yeah. I remember. It was great. Because yeah. I remember driving, well, being driven here and thinking, no one's going to come to this. You know, it's so remote, you know. Uh -huh. Well, I made sure, you know, we advertised it in Classical Guitar magazine. Yeah, and yeah. I do remember at the time, the microphone was in a really strange position. Oh, well, this was, this was very odd, because, I mean, when... I mean, the first concerts we had with David and Wolfgang, they, they'd put the microphones fairly close. Where you would expect them Yes, to be, I mean, know. they might have put another one somewhere further in the building to pick up the general ambience. Mm. But they put a massive pyramid up here, didn't they? Right, right, right in the it, middle. It, where it was, was it exactly? Well, I it was just to remember it quite far back. It was just here, where, where these pillars are here. Right. Right here. Um, so, and they were quite high. So he was sort of 
playing up towards that. Yeah, sure, I'm sure they didn't. They have another microphone near it. No, I, I, I remember it as being a little bit further back. I might have that wrong, but it's, I was sitting over there in the mm. front row though, and I had a sorry, Manuel, but I had a CD Walkman recording it. <laughs> you naughty boy! I know, <laughs> but I knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be on the BBC. And um, I got home, and of course it wasn't very good, and I waited for this BBC recording to come out, and it was a little bit disappointing, because the recording level was so low, I felt. But I mean, yes, but it was interesting. I mean, in, in the interval, you know, we went into the lady chapel, and I sort of checked with him, how are you doing, is everything right? And he was sort of, you know, <laughs> doing this, <laughs> and he sort of said, so well, I hope they can hear me at the back, because I'm playing to the microphone, not to the audience, All which right. I thought was an interesting... That is, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it still came over pretty well. He was, he was playing a ruck guitar. He was, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and I, the conversation I remember you having in the interval with, some, with someone was how it projected so well to mm. the back. Well, I was down the back. Oh, we, were we, you? we normally used to sit at the raised bit at the back right. because the sound does come down the church very well. Mm. Um, and it's quite good to sort of keep an eye on things from there. Yeah. What, what I was thinking on the way here was that. Today, maybe concerts are not as exciting as they were because all we had was albums hmm. and the odd magazine interview. And um, you never saw any film of these players. So you didn't know what the techniques looked like or anything like that. So hmm. it was really, it was so exciting to come along and, and you know, what's he going to... It wasn't the first time that I saw him. It was, um, I'd already seen him about two years before at the Wigmore, but I'd only been playing about a year Oh. So it was wasted on me. I think it went over my head a little bit. And I had to wait quite a long time for him to come back. And we had, had a kind of pilgrimage where another guitarist friend of mine and the girlfriend I had at the time came along. And we, we were determined to get the best seats in the house, or what we thought were the best seats in the house. Well, I think, I think you did. I mean, was, <laughs> well, he arrived in the afternoon when he was doing no, his afternoon no, no, rehearsal. We, we, we arrived at nine in the morning oh to, to be sure to get the best seats. <laughs> and we sat here all day well, I, in those three seats there. I knew you were slightly manic. It, it did worry me that I had... Because it had never happened before that we had people that keen. Right. <laughs> and I had to check with Manuel. Was it all right? Did he mind you sitting there whilst he was doing? Oh, no, it's all right. You know, yeah, just, but the just thing, keep quiet. The thing it? was, we, we <laughs> we'd been sitting there for about six hours at this time. It's got frozen. Yeah, and we the, the door. We heard the door go, and we, we we hadn't thought that he would sound check it, and it was like an added bonus. And uh, we were sitting there, and we heard the door go, and looked behind, and he's quite sort of imposing, you know, his beard and. And he walked down the aisle, and we, we did the worst thing possible. We just started giggling, uncontrollable giggles. Before he played anything, just nerves. It was just we were just kids, and uh, but when he started playing the sound check, it was just just unbelievable. I mean, I remember him practicing, and I mean, he'd be playing along, and if something he didn't like, he'd just go back three bars, play it again, play it again, and carry along again. He could do it anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I remember at the time thinking, God, if I did that, <laughs> it could be interesting. Yeah. You know? But he was complete there. I mean, it was extraordinary. Well, you must have been here when the BBC came and set everything up. I was going to mention the van that was... Uh, well, it was a lorry. It wasn't a van. It was a <laughs> fucking great lorry. I mean, with three big reel-to-reel -reel tapes. I remember Gareth Walter said, oh, yes, you know, that's what we have here. That, that's where the master tape is. So that's untouched. But these other two, you see... If we have to do any editing, we, 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 we can chop it out of this one and then take bits from that one. And mm. Well, I've, I've got a friend that works at the BBC, and he, can, he has access to the archives. Oh, right. If they've been digitised. Uh, yes. But he told me that those recordings are still there, ah. and they're going to do it one day. They're going to digitise oh, them. good, good. Because, I mean, they did some really good, good stuff. Mm. Um, no, but I mean, yeah, we have these great cables running all over the place. I mean, now, nowadays the BBC comes, there's a laptop, you know, a couple of small mics and a little box like you've got, and off they go. Yeah. 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 And the good thing is that you can still, you know, get hold of this recording of this concert. It's still out there. I'll put a link to it on... Um, oh, right. Yeah, I'll yes, put a link yes. in the description. Yeah, but it, I mean, you hear these things from the 80s now. It's the introductions that date them, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The BBC. Yeah. <laughs> The new classical guitar programme this week comes from Prestine. But the, the concert yeah. itself had a massive um, impact because, um, like I say, it, was, it wasn't the first time I saw him, but it was the second time 
where I had a bit of knowledge and I could really appreciate what he was doing. And I think that Bach um, suite oh, yeah. that he did yeah. particularly had a huge effect. Well, on I've him. never heard any guitarist do the whole the whole partita. It left an um, impression on me for days and days afterwards. You know that feeling when you've seen something really special. And uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. On, on route out of town for coffee mm. and uh, this is where Colin Cooper who'd been desperate to get an interview had the bright idea that if he drove Manuel to the airport Manuel could hold the recorder and he could interview him as they drove right, right. and he had this rather old Ford Fiesta <laughs> which, which Manuel sort of eyed with a rather worried expression you know, would that get him to the airport on time? Yeah. Oh, I, absolutely <laughs> fine. Okay. So we, 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 we waved them off. But it was only subsequently we got the story from Colin, which was really funny. Yeah. Was they were driving along and they sort of got down the M4 and sort of, you know, checking the air tickets. It turned out it wasn't Heathrow he was going from. It was the other one down Gatwick. Gatwick. <laughs> <laughs> a bit further then. And does this go any faster? And as they pass Heathrow, you see the planes going, I've gone out, that's not my plane. This <laughs> <laughs> is just kind of said, <laughs> the last part of the journey. Every plane he saw in the area he thought was his, already right. leaving without him. But I think they did get there all right. And, uh, and an amazing thought is that Manuel was only 32, I think. When you think how good he was. Oh, here we go. Yes, that's with the. Oh, that's. <laughs> yes, they've bled it all looks over like it. some bit of old parchment from, you know, the condition of it. But yeah, that's well, the original. Well, this is from 1985, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the original program. This. This um, CV of Manuel, because mm. so much has happened since then, it's really odd to read it now. Because I think he only had three or four albums then. Yeah. And all this stuff about John Williams there. He would never have that in a programme now, would he? Yeah, but this is when he came and did his debut at the Wigmore Hall. And he'd produced that first LP yeah, yeah. of Albanets and Granados, which I have. Yeah. Which I got him to sign when he was here. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was spectacular. I mean, I, Well, I think for sort of younger viewers, it's worth pointing out what the, the impact of those albums at the time. The recording had been so spectacular that yeah. John Williams went to hear to see if he really was that good, and he was. He was, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So the bit that really struck me was this last paragraph. Manuel Barraco is presently on the faculty Manhattan of the Manhattan School, School of, Music of Music in New York. Yeah, so I just read that and instantly thought, I'm but going. you were already at the Guild Hall, though. I was at the Guild Hall, but um, I thought post grad at Manhattan. So yeah, a, a year or two later, I auditioned there, and um, I got in. I even got a scholarship as well, but uh, I couldn't raise the money that I needed for living expenses. It's something like twenty thousand oh pounds, and that was back in the eighties. Yes. So um, he got wind of this. He found out, and being a nice chap, mm. he said, "Come and study with me privately." So oh. I had 20 hours with him, I think it was, over the course of about six or eight weeks. Mm. I used to go to his house oh, wow. and, uh, for two-hour lessons. And, uh, yeah, I learned such a lot. And while I was there, I um, auditioned for Peabody. Mm. And I got in there as well, and I got a scholarship for there, but the same thing, I just couldn't raise the living expenses. So it was a bit sad. Mm. But I was lucky to, to study with him. He suggested... That I recorded every lesson as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. So in my loft yes. at home, there are 20 hours of lessons, and every now and then I listen to them and, and learn something new from them each time because I've moved on a little bit. And yes. 
Yeah, they're really good. But while I was at, at Peabody, I went to, we'd become quite good friends and we were sort of mm. telling each other jokes and stuff and I'd forgotten the calibre of his playing. And I'd been over there about six weeks and we went down to Baltimore and he gave this concert at Peabody mm. and all of a sudden I just remembered. Oh my God, this is who I'm chatting yeah. to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and that was probably the, the concert that had the second most impact on me. Well, I really enjoyed that trip. It brought back so many great memories. A big thank you to Gareth Rees-Roberts and Stephen Hollinghurst from St Andrew's Church for making this possible. Of course, I couldn't go all that way and not try the sound of the church for myself, and I chose a piece that was played that night by Manuel Soliares by Chirina. Thank mm-hmm. you. 